crisis, people are slipping away. The economy's down, people can't get enough pay. As for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Folks without homes, living out in the streets, and the drug addicts. and be glad in it. I'm glad to welcome you back to Speak the Word. I pray that all is well and you are continues to seek God and follow his direction. In this uh, new reality of, of social distancing, uh, I pray that we are following the rules and doing what we need to do in order to not only help ourselves, but help others. For we all live in a community and let us as Christians remember to spread the love. Also, I pray that we as the saints will continue to pray. And if you're not praying, join in prayer because prayer is what we need now. Also, I hope that you remember last week I asked that we will think of those that are going through that may be alone, that maybe we need to reach out and touch. Those that maybe do not have a job or lacking, that maybe we can take a portion of what God has blessed us with and give it and use it to bless others. Because we all are part of a community. And we need all the saints to spread the love. We'll be back in a moment with Speak the Word. Say this tonight, you are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Now lay your hands on yourself so it reaches to me. The strength of God is reaching for you. You are my strength. Strength and like no
declare it. Spread of light, no blood. Let me hear you declare it. Spread of light, no blood. Now say it reaches. Reaches. Let's declare it one more time. You are my strength. Come on. You are my strength. Yes, you are. Strength. Reaches to me. Come on, say in the fullness of your grace. Come on, church. In the fullness of your grace. In the power of your name. In the power of your name. Let me testify. You lift me up. Yes. Hallelujah. You lift me. You lift me up. for being so gracious. Thank you for being so kind. Romans 12 chapter verses 1 through 3. And they will read as follows. And I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be proven what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I, for I say through the grace given unto me and to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly, but ought, ought to think, but think soberly according to God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. I want to speak to you on the subject, back to fundamentals, um, putting it all on the line. In today's society, a lot of times we are guilty of only giving God part of what we want him to see. We like to have on what I call our Sunday best, where we like to talk the right lingo. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. We like to make sure we wear our best mask in which we are smiling. A lot of times we are dealing with problems on the inside. But we must realize God want all. He want every bit of us. Last week we talked about uh, back to fundamental and dealing with prayer. But this week I want to talk about living and giving yourself to God. Because God is not happy with just part of you, but he want all of you. He wants you to when we give our life to Christ and when we get up and we go through our day to life. He want the good, the bad, and the ugly because he realized that we are all human and we are all dealing. We are all going through situations. And the one person we should be able to give it all to, it should be God because he is not the person. Jesus is not the one that's really going to uh, um, point us down. He's going to be the one to help us if we, we turn it over to him that he will take care of. When we look into the scripture, we understand the state of Roman. Romans to a young church is in the, the epicenter where everything is going on and Paul is under arrest, but yet he's ministering to the small church in Rome where everything is going on. It's where all the politics, as a matter of fact, it'd be more where Washington, D.C. is, uh, where we have the government and yet there are a group of saints that are trying to do what's right in the eyesight of God, but yet they're surrounded by politics. They're surrounded by popularity. They're surrounded by a lot of things that are going on, but yet we find that Paul is ministering to this church. He spent the first uh, 11 chapters teaching them the doctrine of being justified by faith, uh, that we don't deserve what we have, but we are justified only because Jesus died on the cross. And because he gave up his life, now we are justified when God sealed, he sealed righteous because we have been acquitted of the sins that we have done personally, that we were guilty of. We was acquitted and we are, we are now able to live a free life. And now we enter chapter 12 and 12 began to teach us how to practically walk the walk that God had called us to. And when we deal with the first three verses, which I'm just going to deal with on today, he starts off by saying that I beseech you, I'm calling on you, brothers, that I want you to realize that God has given us a grace out of his loving kindness and that we should be willing to live in the will of God. Well, what is the will of God? Well, if you look at verse one, it begins to point out. It says that we are to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice. A sacrifice is something that you give the whole portion of, not part of it, but you give the whole portion. Another thing that a sacrifice is, you give the, the, the a sacrifice is what you give of your best. So what, 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 what this scripture is saying that we're giving our whole self, but we are striving to be the best Christian, the best person in God, the most righteous person that we know how. And as we strive, he know that sometimes we may make mistakes, sometimes we fall short. But it quickly that we recognize we need to get back and call on God to help us. Because the only way we can overcome what we're dealing with is we give it to God. Because if we could fix the problem, we would have did it a long time ago. So therefore, we need to go to one that's able to, to help us. And how do we do that? We, we, we do that by 
being a living uh, a, a living a living sacrifice and doing what's holy and that means to be set apart that we 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 are called out we live in our lives not the way the world wants us to be as verse 2 began to tell us but we are living that God wants us to what's holy and acceptable and what is pleasing to God we strive to please God much like a child want to please his parents they want to they want the gratification to know that the, that the, uh, their parent approve of what they're doing so they they work hard, they work diligent, they please. That is the attitude that we should have a Christian, that we want to live a life that pleases in God. Why? Because as we do that, God is able to bring out the best in us. Uh, we uh, may have dreams, we may have aspirations, but when we turn it over to God, we could be the best that he wants us to be. Then he goes along to tell us that we should not be uh, conformed, that we should not uh, um, try to be what the world is not try to fit in the culture but we need to be the unique individual that God created us to be God created some of us with different talents with different gifts and he had empowered us but we cannot reach the full potential of the gift unless we plug into the source and the source is Jesus Christ Now, when we plug into that then we can be the best that what God want us to be some of us are going to be politicians, but yet we can't be the best politician unless we have God on the inside. Some of us are going to be doctors and lawyers, but we can't do that until God comes into our life. Some of us are going to be preachers, and some of us are going to be lawyers, but you cannot be your best unless you have God on the inside to give you the power, the, ins the, the insight to lead you and guide you to be the best. And the only way you can do that, you got to give your whole self, totally committed to the call and to the will of God. And this is the will of God. Now, the next thing he tells us that by his, his gratitude, by his grace, he, he, he has allowed us to, to, to be what we can be, but we all not to think that we are better than anyone else. Because the truth of the matter that if you are a saint, you are only a sinner saved by grace. There are three class classification. There is the sinner, the sinless, and the one with no sin. There was only one that with no sin, that was Jesus Christ. That the sinless and that's the saints. And that's the sinners that all that have not confessed Christ as their personal Savior. So therefore, when you confess God as your Jesus, your personal Savior, then you are able to start walking a new life. You begin to your you begin to change. Well, where the change come? It come from the inside and work on the outside. As you begin to work on your mind and your heart, and you study the Scripture, and you begin to pray, and you begin to seek the application of God's Word in your life, then you can start begin to have a newness, a new outlook, a new focus. You begin to see things. You begin to or begin to understand what God will in your life. Some of you may be suffering right now and you feel like you don't have a purpose because you're locked in. This is a time that you can sit down and pray and God can reveal to you the purpose and the God. He has planted dreams inside of you that if you take time to stop focusing on the negative and focus on the positive, that you can really be able to reach the fullness of walking in the Lord. Now, I'm reminded of an old story where an old preacher went to an Indian reservation to preach a revival. And there he preached the first night. An old Indian chief came up and, and he, he heard the message. And he was convicted. He came up and he laid his blanket down on the altar. And the preacher kept preaching. He said, no, that's not it. The next night, um, which was Tuesday night, he came up and he laid down his tomahawk. And he said, uh, uh, um, and he looked at him. He said, no, no, that's not it. The next night he came and he brought his horse and he brought it in and he gave it to the preacher and the preacher said no that's not it the the thursday night he came in he brought it he brought down his tp and he took it in and he laid it down before and the preacher said no that's it after that here it is it's friday night and the indian chief have nothing else to give he done gave it all to the to the preacher and he has nothing else but he want to give he want to understand he want to grow in the lord and then he comes up to the altar and there when he get there he stand before the preacher and, and he says lord i'm a preacher man i give myself and the preacher says that's what i've been waiting for that's what god is waiting for he waiting for you to totally surrender and give your life to him totally not part but totally give yourself to him that he can mold you and he can shape you, not you doing it yourself, but let him work on you 
and make you what he wants you to be. Now, there may be one that's maybe in the free part of sin that don't know Christ in, in, in your life and that you're searching for a Savior. You're searching for that missing point in your life. Maybe there's one that maybe that, that, that don't know which way to go, but I'm here to tell you that is a better way. That is a way that you can commit and give your life to him. The first thing you got to recognize that we all are in the same boat. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all, we all have been in this, we all are in that state. But we also got to realize that God loved us so much out of his loving kindness that he loved us while we were yet sinners. And then we died, and then he died. He died for our sins. But he also, he also want us to know that we have the right, that we can give our life to him. If we just trust him, and everything will be all right. To God, to God be the glory that we may continue to walk and do what he wants us to do. We will return later with the call to discipleship. And I continue to pray. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come right now to give you the praise and honor. We come thank you, Father, for being so good and so awesome in our lives. We come, Father, realize it had not been for you, we wouldn't be here. So, Father, we come right now, Father, realizing that, Father, we are in desperate times, Father, we realize that there are a lot of decisions that are being made, Father, a lot of opinions that are being lifted up. But, Father, we come, Father, that we may hear your voice and hear it clear. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for those that are hearing this tape and do not know you, Father, that they may come to know you in a real way, that they may submit their lives unto you, Father, and give their life to you. Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus, Father, just give you the glory because you are so good. We pray for those right now that are sick. We claim healing in the name of Jesus. Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus, Father, that we may continue to walk worthy of you, Father. We pray right now, Father, for those that are in hospital for healing. We pray for those whose families are locked up, Father. We pray right now, Father, that we may come to recognize, Father, that you are the answer to every situation. And Father, we pray for our government officials as they seek your will and way, Father, that they may walk by faith and not by sight, that they may trust you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we love you and we give you the praise. And Father, we just thank you. We pray this prayer in thy son Jesus' name. Amen.
someone else who needs to make a decision right now. If the Lord was to call you right now, the question is, that's it, come on, are you ready? The Lord loves you, He really does. The Bible says the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. When He comes back, my brothers and sisters, the Bible said He's coming like a thief in the night. No man knows the day or the hour when He's going to come. If I were you, I wouldn't play with my soul. My soul is too valuable. Come on, I see you. I see you. I see you. Praise God. Come on. Come on. Come on.
there's no failure in you. Yes, I believe your promises are true. Oh, 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 I believe. 